Good day, Stephen Dave Lipinski. May God bless you always. Throughout the year, we celebrate the feast days of many saints. Saints from the ancient church to some of the more contemporary ones. And throughout the year, we look to these individuals to see what the message they can give us about following Jesus Christ by the examples of their own life. There are a few days when we don't celebrate a saint per se, but something else. One of them is in September when we have the exaltation of the cross. We're celebrating the cross that Jesus died on. And this week, on February 22nd, we celebrate a piece of furniture. A piece of furniture. And uh, in lies there a story about what we're called to do as Christians. The piece of furniture is a small squat chair, looking very old and broken. Or not that you could see it now, because it's inside a larger um, chair, if you will, hanging on the wall about 40 feet in the air at the back of St. Peter's Basilica. If you Google St. Peter's chair, you'll see some pictures of it. What this is, and it's above the rear altar in St. Peter's, is believed to be the chair that Peter sat upon when he taught in Rome, and hence Peter's chair. And Sitting on it while teaching was one of the ways that teachers often did back then. In fact, the word for our cathedral comes from the Latin word for chair, cathedra, because a bishop in ancient days would often sit when he taught. So where that bishop's chair is, is where the mother church is for the diocese. So why do we venerate this chair? And yes, I know people can say, are we sure it's the chair that Peter had? Has there been DNA testing of the wood? Has it been, you know, the carbon tested and all that? No, that hasn't happened. And I will not claim as an, as an inalienable truth that it is Peter's chair, but it does teach a message to us. Because Peter was in Rome and he sat on a chair, but why was he in Rome? Why was he teaching? Why did he risk his life and die in Rome? Because he had heard the good news back in Judea. He had seen Jesus walk through Galilee and Samaria and Judea. He had witnessed Jesus ascend into heaven. Why go to Rome? Why risk your life? Why suffer? Well, because Jesus told us to. And then Matthew's Gospel, he says, go out and baptize all nations, teaching them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The idea there was we're called to be missionaries. We're called to go out and spread the good news throughout the world. That was Peter's mission. That was the mission of the other apostles. That's been the mission of every Christian since the time of Jesus, to spread the good news to all. For most of us, that may only occur in our own families, our own hometowns or the area we grew up in. For a few, they go out to the missions and they go out and they risk their lives quite often to spread the good news. For those of us who may not have been dangerous territories, we do risk something to have the good news and to share. We risk the fact that sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. Sometimes people are going to reject us because of what we believe. Sometimes it's going to cause some unpleasantness in relationships. And sometimes we'll just feel dejected because, you know, we try to be good Christians, we try to spread the good news, and does it matter? Can I, am I making a difference? And that's not our, our decision to make. Our decision is to go out and evangelize, to bring the good news to all, whether they've heard it before or not. So that's our call. That's why Peter was in Rome. That's why Peter sat on a chair to teach. And that's why when we celebrate the feast of St. Peter's chair, we're remembering that we're always called to be missionaries every day of our life in any way we can. May God bless you and keep you all the days of your life.